views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. In 1971, he became the very first radio morning man for inner city broadcasting flagship station WBLS FM. He's a legend and an icon in the radio and broadcast industry, but most importantly, a true household name who has transcended generations. The legendary Ken Spider Webb joins me next, right here on Perspectives. What's on your mind? Let him know. What's on your mind? What's on your mind? Let him know. Anything relevant to life, you bring it to the table. Whether you make a move solo or a movement with a stable. No fables, just speak on your decisions. Because in the long run, it's your voice, your views, your vision. Keeping it real with many messages for you to know. This ain't radio, but DJ runs the show. Entertainment, he rocks it. Politics, he locks it. The host with the most would handle any topic. Don't forget to share your perspective with Shines of Light. Because it might make a difference in someone else's life. And hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Perspectives. I am Darren Jaime and of course we thank you for watching. You can watch Perspectives every week here on Bronx that's channel 67. If you have Verizon Files, that would be channel 33. And of course you can always check past episodes of Perspectives out on the web. We also can encourage you to stay connected to us via social media. We're on uh, both Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And uh, yeah, you can get connected to us here. But on today's show, a very, 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 very special guest. He started doing radio in the 1960s. And by 1971, he became the very first radio morning man for Inner City Broadcasting's flagship station, WBLS-FM. And if you don't know, if you're across New York City, his name, it just rang throughout New York City, it became household, it went from generations. He's an iconic voice in radio. But he's also an educator, an entrepreneur, a role model, and so much more. Grandfather, yeah, enjoying the life. <laughs> Welcome to legendary Ken Spider-Web. You had to get that I in. I had man. to get that in, man. I had to get that in. How you doing? Hey, man. Okay. It's an honor to have you. Well, thank you very much for, for inviting me in. And uh, I just was wondering who you were talking about when you made that introduction. <laughs> no, well, is it because it because is it because you know time is going by so fast? Right, right, right. You know, and I think to a certain extent, like when time goes by so fast, right? You look back and you say, "Wow, I did all that." Yeah. In that short time. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's uh, it, it's really a pleasure because I think one of the outstanding things here is uh, uh, I had an opportunity to to teach television production. Mm -hmm. And I walked into the studio here and to see your interns working and, and the producers working. It just brought back a whole lot of memories, you know. Get the juices flowing, yeah. yeah. I feel like telling them what to do now. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell us what to do. Listen, no, no, and, we'll, no. and we'll listen. And we'll listen. I just love the environment. I love the environment. And media has been, media has been uh, very, very good to you. And you've been very, very good to it. Um, talk to me about, because when we, when we go back in, I remember growing up, right? And I'm dating myself, but it's the truth. I, I let's turn on the radio. I hear Ken Spiderweb, WBLS, right? But not only were you just this radio voice, but you really became a part of our community. Mm -hmm. Well, it started out that way, Darren. Uh, I lived in Amityville, Long Island, mm -hmm. and my neighbor was a uh, Tuskegee Airman. Okay. And uh, he was a ham radio operator, and uh, we thought he was a Russian spy at the time. <laughs> uh, I was about 12, 13 years old, me and my friend Danny, and we used to uh, go over his home. Uh, first, we thought he was a spy. We mm -hmm. found out he wasn't. He was a ham radio operator, amateur radio operator. And he taught us um, uh, radio from the very beginning, taught us the Morse code, which I still know in my head, mm. uh, how to build transmitters and receivers and things like that. So that's, that's how we found the love for electronics. And so uh, it just took me on this path that I'm on now. Yeah, and it's, it's, I mean, it's been years, and you've went from, you know, we talked about BLS and doing serious radio, and now you're doing jazz. Talk about, you know, what are you doing? Tell people now what you're doing. Well, with, with Inner City, uh, Inner City Broadcasting owned W, or they, they bought WBLS and WLIB, uh, but they didn't have enough money at the time to get both, the mm -hmm. AM and FM, so there was a two-year, three-year grace in there. So what happened was... Um, 
the old owners kept the station and moved downtown and changed the call letters to WBLS instead of LIBFM. Mm -hmm. And uh, they picked up the option to buy the station uh, later on. So when they split, they needed a morning person. And so uh, Frankie Crocker was the program director at the time, and he had been on Long Island and heard me out there on a small radio station. So he says, come on in, I got work for you to do. Mm -hmm. And so I was the morning man, uh, all by myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to do my own engineering, my own comboing, they called it, mm -hmm. my own selling of radio times, my own engineering, building the studio next, the production studio next to the control room. Yeah, I had three jobs and one paycheck. Uh, <laughs> right, right. And I had just bought a house, and I had my, my third daughter at the time, and so I had to go to work. That's it. So uh, that's what I did. Mm -hmm. One day they told us, well, you're number one in New York. I said, all right, now get out of the way because I still have work to do. That's it. <laughs> and you were number one in New York for a, for, a, for a long time. To go from that ham radio operator to being number one, what do you think it was that made the difference in you know, rising up to becoming that voice that New York wanted to hear. Well, well, Darren, when you have a mortgage <laughs> and you have the electric to pay, <laughs> I mean, that's the, you right, me, right. the bottom line is to, to take care of the, those things and doing a job that you love to do. Uh, I, I love going, getting up at 4.30 in the morning and coming in to do the show. Uh, my father used to tell me, uh, I'm glad you got a job, son, but anybody that's sitting in a room for four hours and talk to themselves has got to be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you paid the bills. Yeah. So it was, uh, see, radio and TV at that time was much different than it is now. Um, it was a business uh, many people didn't want to get into. They didn't understand it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate to have had that introduction to it. So I wasn't afraid of the the environment, the studios, I, I, I didn't have any fear of that. Uh, and so uh, it just, you're just one of those persons that end up there. Mm -hmm. uh, there were times when they didn't um, have people of color coming into a studio. I, I went to a station one time and wanted to look around. They said, oh, well, no, you can't, you can't come in here. Why? Uh, and so uh, it was that kind of a, a business. Mm -hmm. And now it's just uh, good to see uh, people of all shades and kinds to be on the air and uh, be able to express their feelings and do their, their job. It's, it's a wonderful thing to see the transition. What was it like for you being able to see a guy like Percy Sutton, you know, someone who actually was, you know, this African-American owner? It's not what you normally see, right? It's not what we see when it when comes to ownership of, you know, station and, and, and being, that, being that person. But he literally, in his own kind of way, was an icon and a trendsetter. What was it like for you being an on-air person seeing a person of color at the helm. Well, he, he always had a dream of having this kind of a business. Uh, he and the others here in Harlem, uh, in New York City, they, they dreamed of having a, a, a mouth in the community. Uh, and um, owning a radio station was, was a dream because it was so far out of, it seemed so far out of reach. Uh, he had a difficult time getting um, the money needed to support a radio station. You had to uh, ask and try to find uh, millions of dollars. Uh, and so you had to convince the community to invest in this kind of a, a business. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he did it. He just about did it. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> what happened after uh, uh, three or four years, three years I think it was, they then purchased the FM and then moved downtown. So now they had the first African-American owned radio station complex in the city, and I dare say the country. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it was hard for him as well to fight that end of getting the finances needed to support that, mm -hmm. you see. And uh, we talked a lot because uh, my, his, him and my father had um, crossed somewhere in World War II somewhere. Really? because uh, they would come to the basketball games, and I want my father seeing me shoot, you know? Mm -hmm. But those two would be up in the bleachers talking about things that they saw and did in the war, Second World War. Mm -hmm. So um, he was a dreamer. Mm -hmm. He was a dreamer, and so were those who were around him. Mm -hmm. They were as well. Ken Spider-Webb, our guest here on Perspective. Stay with us. Coming up after the break, we're going to talk about this transition from radio to syndicated radio to serious satellite radio. Explain a little bit more about that when we return right here 
on perspectives. retirement happen after all you made this vacation happen double points with every purchase cleverly merging promotions love it cross-referencing travel sites and booking all your flights with those vouchers i got us bumped they were like oh but now they're like <laughs> aloha you aced this vacation now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org Back here on Perspective, share with us today the legendary man himself, Mr. Ken Spiderweb, who has been a long time uh, voice in New York City. I uh, heard a lot about him, WBLS and uh, inner city broadcasting, and truly a pleasure to have you sharing with us a little bit. And uh, as, as I talk, you know, I'm saying now you, you're on Sirius Radio, Channel 49, and uh, we can check you out in the morning. <laughs> you do? Yeah. Okay, that's good. <laughs> well, give me this now. You're on the morning. We've been doing this for a minute. A lot of people don't remain relevant to this very present day. You've got a special key, so can you tell us what is the key to actually remaining relevant? Because there's a lot of people who start off in the industry who aren't here today, but you're still going. Well, Darren, as we said before, <laughs> the mortgage company, <laughs> <laughs> electric light. Right. No, really, it's uh, uh, when you're bitten <laughs> by this this strange bug of broadcasting or radio or television or electronics or anything, your bit, your bit. Mm -hmm. And um, I used to see uh, other companies do syndication, so I went and got into the books and found out what it was. And the short of it was, um, I would um, prepare a program in my home studio and uh, duplicate it and send it to different radio stations. Uh, this took me to uh, sending it to the uh, Japanese, it appeared over uh, uh, to Tokyo FM network, mm -hmm. uh, down in uh, Manila in the Philippines. Um, I sold it to the Russians. I was getting ready to say. <laughs> I did, you I did, did, you did, you I did. did, I sold it to the Russians. And uh -huh. the strange things about those guys, they had no concept of, you know, a program every week. Like, mm. we look at episodes every week. They don't have that program. So they wanted a box of shows. So I sent them a box of shows. <laughs> they <laughs> really? sent about 40, 50 shows. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they bought it. Mm -hmm. And also in Dubai and down throughout the Caribbean, this little two-hour jazz show, which I call Jazz from the City, uh, it is now on uh, isoulradio.com. One of my old colleagues, Jay Dixon, he uh, has a little platform, mm -hmm. and uh, we put it on there for Sunday morning. I, I edit out, uh, you know, things that are dated. I mean, right. you're not going to get Miles Davis playing at the Blue Note this weekend. Right. He's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so um, the, the point is I, I, I took that and began to syndicate my own show. Mm -hmm. I had a number of shows all over the country, different college stations, things like that. Took the show from... 82 to 97, mm -hmm. it was syndicated. And now we talk about syndicated radio, you're on it. I mean, it's, it's going on now. The evolution has changed, right? Because, right. you know, I remember we would be able to tune in, hear a voice, hear you, um, and find out what's really going on in our community. Sure. Now, 
it's not what's going on in our community. It's pretty general. It's syndicated. And life in the business has changed dramatically. Right. Um, I might say, too, that um, because of technology, uh, different things can be done. Uh, you can go to an event on a Friday night, Sunday afternoon, pull out your cell phone and stream live. You mm -hmm. see, um, We didn't have that before. And there were many, many talented um, figures and voices that uh, came out of the streets. One of them, outstanding, came right off the street, David Lampell. He was a newsman. Mm -hmm. And when he was a kid, uh, he, he would always have some issue that he wanted to get straight in the community. And when he found out that he could go to a radio station it's and out. talk for nothing and explain his view, well, our producers said, well, wait a minute. We need to get him on our side. <laughs> he need to have our uniform on. So we bought, they brought him over to uh, LIB. They brought him in. And he eventually became the news director mm -hmm. because uh, it, it, that was one of the only opportunities for you to get your issues out, right. get your word out. So nowadays, that little cell phone or your portable camera there, uh, you can uh, be your own news director. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, what is it for you? What, what, what do you want to, you know, out of all this great work that you've done and the body of work that you've done, what do you want to accomplish in this season? Well, I think I, I used to hear people say this, and I used to wonder what's wrong with them. And here I am saying it. I think now that my... Um, my children are grown. Ken! Ken! <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. And the grandchildren. I got some pictures I'll show you of my grandchildren. I, 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 I have a love for, for my electronics and, and my broadcasting. And I managed to fit in little things that I do now. We do a measure of voice work as well. But I think what it is is that you sit back now and you look and you, um, you see the younger people growing up and, and, and finding their place in this business. I like to help them along mm -hmm. because uh, I enjoy doing that. Even at BLS, we had a community outreach programs. We had the WBLS Short Shots basketball team. Yeah. Then when I went over to Kiss, we had the Kiss, Kiss cards. cards. And uh, one time, we, two times, we played each other in Madison yeah. Square Garden. Yeah. So I just love being out there and, and enjoying that kind of thing with the younger folks. And uh, uh, I, I don't know. It, 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 it's like balance now. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing to look at, at, at how time has progressed and the things that have happened in the industry since then. For you, talking to a younger person today, right, with all your years of experience, what's the message that you send to them about this work? I mean, you said, you, you know, we got some interns here. What's the message you send? Well, let me put it this way, uh, Darren. Let me, let me put it this way. I had an interview with Smokey Robinson because mm -hmm. we would interview different artists and, and uh, I asked him more or less the same question you, you're asking me. And he said, be about something. Do something, man. Don't just stand there with your scratching your head, wondering which way to go. Be about something. Progressive. Move ahead. Read your books. Look at, look at uh, documentaries. Learn something. Do something. Be somebody. He that's said, it. And that's what he said. And now I have to interpret that. And that means take advantage of the things that we uh, have. Uh, maintaining our hum humanity. I come from a Bible reading family, so every time I stepped out of line, somebody grabbed a good book and showed me the principles in it that guide mm -hmm. our life to make us better people and, and uh, enjoy the work of our hands and doing things. So I think Smokey was on, the, on track when yeah. he said, be something, be about something, have some rules, be somebody, you yes. know, and not let your life just go. Well, I'll tell you, 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 you have been it and you continue to do it. <laughs> Kids Spiderweb, our guest here. Listen, we'll be back with more coming up right after this. Did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? Totally. I did. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. It's totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you know that strollers have the right of way on the sidewalk? Yes. Yep, I did. Did you guys Did know? you know that kids who eat breakfast have higher GPAs? Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah. That's actually what I was going to say. Did you know babies should never touch silver? It's really bad for them. I knew that. Did you guys know that statistically friendly kids have more friends? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. I'm putting that on my blog. I just put it in mine. Back here on Perspectives, going down memory lane with Ken Spiderweb here with us, and uh, certainly uh, I want to get to this about having that voice, right? Because um, when we talk about that voice, many times it was the voice of radio that was the calm in the storm, um, that provided the joy in the midst of pain, um, love in the midst of war, um, and we didn't really recognize, I think, during that time how much radio really played a part in solving day-to-day -to -day issues. And you guys were a major part of like being that voice. Do you recognize now the role and, 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 and the help that you played in, for lack of a better saying, being a blessing to the community? Uh, I, I have to say I, I, I'm still on the trail. Mm -hmm. um, remember back at that time there weren't that many outlets you know, we had WBLS was the only sound of its kind uh, on radio and FM. The AM radio and the brothers that worked on AM, um, they, they were like the temptations of radio, mm -hmm. WWRL. That's what I used to listen to. Mm -hmm. Frankie Crocker, Jerry Bledsoe, Hank Spann, Enoch Gregory, all of those guys. They were liking themselves to the temptations of radio. Um, when... FM came, now you can hear stereo, W-B-L-S. Oh, and then when they start putting it in the cars, mm -hmm. prior to that, we used to listen at home, run to school, do what we had to do, and run back home to listen to the radio. Mm -hmm. Then they put it in cars, and uh, people used to hear now this stereo in the cars. Mm -hmm. There was only a few outlets, uh, even in other cities like that. So now... Uh, today, we have so many ways to, to, to become that voice, you see. Um, we used to be able to uh, relate things that, uh, regarding principles and how to, how to live and, and enjoy your life and, and, and seek your dream, you see. Uh, nowadays, everybody can do it. It's coming at us all different kinds of ways. So we, we have a voice, but it's not like it used to be. Mm -hmm. And at that time, there was a lot of pressure to put on it. You couldn't use bad language on the air. Right. Nowadays, you hear it's free. it. free. <laughs> right. Yeah. If, hey. In fact, you'd lose your license. We, we had to have a license, a third-class license, uh, to be on the air at that time. And uh, now it's not needed. You can just say whatever you want to say these days. Right. How do you want people to remember your body of work? Well... That's a tough question. I usually ask that when I interview people. <laughs> See, there it is. I, I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think, Welcome to the other side. I think they could, um, just uh, the, the interesting things we did, the different shout-outs. Mm -hmm. I remember one time there was a, a, a police action over in Brooklyn. A woman was holding her daughter or some kids in the community a hostage. She had the radio on, and she wouldn't let the police in to, you know, to take care, oversee things. So one of the police officers called me on the air, and I returned and talked to that woman through the radio. I mentioned a couple of upbuilding words to let mm -hmm. the police officer in, the female police officer in, and she came in and was able to uh, calm the situation down. Um, I, I said to myself, boy, uh, you, you did something there, Ken. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you start thinking about that, Darren, something else happens, and you get on with that one. So right. you, you never right. really get a chance to 
look back and see what you really did because there's always something, there's always a need, the basketball team, if it wasn't that, to mm -hmm. come and talk about broadcasting to different schools and colleges. Mm -hmm. um, we went to Hampton mm -hmm. uh, and talked down there. There's always something else that you found interesting to help somebody else. You never really got a chance until now. And so if anybody remembers me doing something, sinking that eye open a yeah. jump shot from the foul, from the outline, I mean, well, that was good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Best moment as a broadcaster for you? One of them is sitting here with you, being alive and above ground and vertical. That's one of the things. Thanks. That's, <laughs> I appreciate that, yes. That's one thing. And I guess the second thing is that um, uh, it, it still has a has a hold on me. It still has. It bit me when I was 12, and it's still holding on. Mm. And um, I just always will love communicating and giving the best that I can to everybody. And because um, somebody helped me, yeah. Gene Brown, Lieutenant Gene Brown. You can look him up on Google. He was 19 years old. He was shot down in a war. He spent uh, a year and change in a prisoner of war camp. Mm -hmm. Came home, couldn't get a job toting bags in an airport, but he was a flyer. And uh, had he not taken interest in, in his neighbor's son, me, I wouldn't be sitting here. Mm. Well, we would be sitting here today if it wasn't for you, honestly. Thank you, you very much. You, you are great shoulders to stand on. Uh, when we did not have very many African-American broadcasters in both television and radio, you were the one. You are the voice. And it's a pleasure to have you come share with us here on Perspectives. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Come on back, Ken Spider-Webb. I'm back. All right, he's back already. <laughs> now, listen, before we go back, tell people where they can catch you. Go, go, go ahead and tell people. Um, you can uh, catch me on Sirius XM, 6 a.m. to 12 noon Eastern Time on Channel 49. We call it Soul Town, classic soul of the 60s and early 70s. And also iSoul Radio. iSoul Radio is um, iSoulRadio.com. Um, a young uh, New Yorker has got a platform there, and he's streaming uh, music uh, that is uh, known by New Yorkers. And we have jazz from the city on at 7 to 9 a.m. Sunday morning. All right. Got to get out of here because kids got to show me some pictures of the grandkids. Listen, got to get up. <laughs> kids, by the way, have our guest here. Darren Hyman on the Center Perspective saying thank you all for watching. Until next time we meet, stay safe. Share your perspective with somebody else. For our producer, Curlew Burton, and the rest of the staff, thank you so much for watching. We'll check you real soon. Take care. God bless. Perspective.